It's a hard drive and invincible artist also coming out as well. In between him is Dream Wave, and on the inside, expectedly, All American Native with his cat like speed. It's All American Native on an early lead. On the outside, Dream Wave desperately trying to get by in the light stages. Title search, keeping the hole closed. Getting rough as Invincible Artist. Invincible Artist has gone on a very expensive break. So moving up is No Pan Intended. On the inside is Coast to Coast Yankee. Another four back to the Lifetime Man. Just been past Ambro Animate and still off stride. Invincible Artist. A quarter of 26 and three fifths. And on the give and go, here comes All American Native taking his place in the lead. And the lead momentarily was Dream Wave. Now a length and a half behind the powerful striding All American Native. Then on the inside, title search was shuffled to third. In fourth, no pen intended. Miller's waiting as long as he can before he has to go. And now's the time. And here comes into the flow, coast to coast Yankee. Next one, lifetime man. Halfway home for these talented three year olds in 55 and three fifths. So they move around free holds, third turn and head to the back stretch. And 1,000 pounds of power and four power. Powerful legs. It's All American Native hitting the back stretch a length and a half up. No pan intended on the outside. He's trying his heart out to get closer, and every time he does, All American Native seems to spurt away. On the inside, Dream Wave is taking some bad steps and is having a problem there with Coast to Coast Yankee causing major problems. On the inside, title search going wide was Lifetime Man, three quarters in 124. So the race has boiled down to All American Native on the outside. Here comes No Pan Intended, and it is up for grabs. High theater here at Freehold in the cane on the inside all American native and Campbell's in trouble and he can't hold off no pan intended no pan intended he's on his way he's a 2003 cane pace champion up for second title search up and third fading all American native in 153 and 3 Splendor the 49th winner of the historical cane pace number six no pan intended Ninth win this year for the brilliant three-year-old son of Pacific Fella at a classic wish by Ombro Emerson, owned by Bob Glazer's Peter Pan Stable out of Pepper Pike, Ohio, trained by Ivan Sugg with a pinpoint drive from Dave Miller, winning in a sharp 153-3. and three. And in the winner's circle, presenting the trophy to Mr. Glazer, the happy owner of No Pan Intended, the general manager at the track, Mr. Don Cody, along with race secretary, director of racing, Mr. Peter Koch. Congratulations to Mr. Glazer and a special victory for No Pan Intended, becoming the 49th winner of the Kane Pace. 6-3 exacta, $202.00. The try, 632, $643.40. Momentarily, we will have interviews with our publicity director, Don Belock, in the winner's circle with the connections of No Pan Intended. Pick three of 256, $48.80. Here's a rundown of the cane. Invincible Artist, 8th. Ambra Adamant, 6th. All-American Native, 3rd. Title Search, 2nd. Dreamwave, 7th. Coast to Coast Yankee, 4th. No Pan Intended, the winner. Lifetime Man, 5th. Top Down, 8 6 3 2 7 4 one, five. Ladies and gentlemen, we now direct your attention to the winner's circle, where our publicity director, Don Belock, is interviewing 
Uh, happy driver, Dave Mel, the man who chauffeured, no pan intended. Don and Dave. Thank you, Larry. In order to circle with me now, winning driver David Miller. This is the second time he's been here. He won this race two years ago with Four Star Shark. But tell us a little bit about this race today, how it unfolded. Well, well my intentions going into the race was to leave as hard as I could and, and uh, try to get somewhere close to the lead because I figured the four would leave and I knew the one would leave. Uh, but behind the gate, when I seen George leaving out, I went ahead and uh, just kind of played it by ear and I dropped in and uh, actually worked out great. This, the fast quarter uh, set it up for us there. And, uh, what really helped out was able to drop back in the two hole. I that really, I really swelled him up then. I was going to ask you about that. Uh, it's kind of unusual when you got to go first up that you're lucky enough to get a tuck going into that last, last turn. Do you think that made a difference? Yeah, it d definitely helped out. You know, the first quarter it, it took their toll on both them horses. I mean, 26 and three. That's, uh, I know that's not a big quarter in these days, but out here on this track it sure is though. Yeah, the pace did work out for you though. We got a, a relatively slow second half when you're first over. I think that's what you're you're hoping for. Yeah, it worked out good. You know, I was just coming easy with him there, and uh, I took a run him up the back stretch when the tool opened up, and uh, I, I really think he'd have won even if he got left out. He, he did was very strong today and did that very easy. He was really pacing through the stretch, and uh, I don't think he was going to be denied today. It was really good. Uh, no, I, he, he did that fairly easy. Okay, thank you, David, and good luck in the jug. Thanks. I'm going to talk to now the winning owner, Mr. Bob Glazer, the owner of Peter Pan Stables, six times leading money-winning owner in uh, North America. And, Bob, we talked a couple of days ago about this colt and uh, how he developed. And uh, maybe you want to talk a little bit about that, how you brought him up to this. Well, the two, he was, it was a good horse, but certainly wasn't a standout. And I really had no idea how he'd come back at three. So uh, we took it easy with him. He was still eligible to non-winners at two, in fact. We've raised him in a couple of the Green Acres. And uh, we've given him plenty of time between races, and he's, uh, it's agreed with him. If you look at his form from last year, like you said, he was a good horse. He made over $100,000, but he only won one time. And this year, he's really blossomed. This is, his, I think, his ninth win out of 12 now. Well, last year, he was second in the American National out of Balmoral and showed some signs of brilliance. Uh, was also fourth in the Breeders' Crown. So, like I said, he showed that he could go with the top Colts, but he didn't show that he could beat them. And uh, again, this year, I, I really didn't know what to expect. Um, you know, he raced very well in the Meadowlands pace, just things didn't work out. And uh, like you said, it, his, uh, he's, I think his confidence has grown. Uh, I know mine has, I know David's has, and uh, things have just worked out so far. Well, good luck. You're the only one uh, eligible for the Triple Crown from here, so uh, good luck in uh, Little Brown Jug. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Back to you, Larry. Hey, thank you, Don, and congratulations to Bob and Dave and all the connections that brought you this year's winner, no pen intended, in the 49th cane. 13th race is coming up in 14 minutes. There's exacted trifecta, superfecta, 